How's it going guys? This is Matthew with Garagistic here to explain about the camber and toe shim kits on the back of an E30. But before we get into that, we're gonna have Tito explain the fundamentals of aligning the rear end of an E30. Okay, so really quick, I just wanna explain camber and toe on the subframe with an example of an actual trailing arm. So on the inside mounting points of the subframe that's closest to the diff is gonna be for your camber. Camber is gonna be adjusted with the slot being vertical and that's gonna give you the up and down movement you need to adjust camber. You can see the trailing arm, how it'll adjust the camber. So you're looking at the wheel going in and out of the fender. For toe, it's gonna to be on the outside closest to the bushing and then that's gonna be a horizontal slot. And as you can see, the movement moves it back and forth giving you that the toe in, toe out adjustment at the fender. So picture the fender and the wheel being here. It's gonna to wanna, to, the way it's moving, it's giving you that wheel toe adjustment. Now that Tito's explained how the fundamentals of the back of an ether should align, we're here to talk about a specific Gargistic product, the Gargistic Shim Kit. So in order to use our shim kit, you're gonna have, our, have to have these camber and toe brackets, either from our product line or from another uh, supplier, but either way, they all work the same. Once you have those, you're gonna have to weld them onto your existing trailing arm. For camber, you're gonna have to weld them in a vertical direction, and for toe, on the outside, it'll have to be a horizontal. Once you've welded them on, you're then gonna have to actually dremel the hole now that you have an, uh, and actually just elongate that hole. You can find a full explanation on how to weld these camber and toe alignment brackets on our other YouTube video. Once you have your camber and toe brackets welded, then we're gonna end up actually showing you how to use the shim kit. The best way to describe how the shim kit works is to show you how the conventional eccentric hardware works. Now, in the past, other vendors have used E39 subframe hardware, um, which is what this is replicated on. We make our own, but it's basically the same thing. And it's basically how a conventional kit would work um, in most aligning of most cars, how you end up putting the bolt in there and you're, you take it to your alignment shop and you're actually you know, moving this bolt and you can see that the whole thing is moving up and down. And that's what's basically changing either your camber or your toe. Very conventional. Now, what the shim kit does is achieve the same thing except make it where when you're actually road racing or you're, you know, uh, if you're a spec racer, if you're actually hitting things, you know, these things actually will move as you hit things, you know, and you know, get knocked out of alignment. So in order to avoid that, you basically would use the shim kit. Now, in order to use the shim kit, they're all marked in increments from zero to three. You can see them, they're all engraved in the corner. And what these basically stand for would be millimeter uh, adjustments. So zero being basically either the very bottom of the hole, or if you flip it, the very top. Now, if it was a toe bracket, it would be the same thing, right? It would be either very far forward or very far back. This is your zero adjustment. That's what that number is for. Basically means bottomed out in one direction or the other. Now, let's say you wanted to then move it where, you know what, it was a zero, right? It was all the way at the very bottom, which would be uh, max camber, the way it is right now. Well, you want it to be a slightly higher. Well, you're gonna take your one, which is one millimeter higher, and slide that in. So you're gonna take your zero out, and put your one millimeter in like that. And what you can see is it moved it up one millimeter. So basically take out one millimeter of camber. Now, what that actually would translate to on your car really depends on ride height and a bunch of other variables. So you, it doesn't like translate one millimeter to a degree. You know, it really depends on ride height. So it's one of those things that just like, you know, the centric bolt, it's gonna take some trial and error. So similarly, you know, if you wanted it to be a little bit higher, you would go to two millimeter. So here would be the two millimeter. or the three millimeter. And you can see I basically moved it up. And you basically, they all could also be used the same way in the other direction, where it's moving it three millimeters from the positive direction. And that really depends on what you're trying to achieve. So once you've figured out which shim kit you're gonna want, you're gonna have to make sure that they're matching on both sides. So I'm just gonna pretend here that I'm doing a full negative car, negative alignment car. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert this hardware through the trailing arm. There will be a trailing arm here, and then I'm gonna push it out, put my zero in one side, zero in on the other, just like that. Washer and nylon nut and tighten it up just like that. Now what's great about these shim kits is you're able to then 
you know, put it on the alignment and you're trying to figure it out. You're like, you know what, that wasn't quite right. You don't have to take the whole thing apart. You know, you can just slide out the shim kit. I'm taking out my zero, for example. I'm gonna put in my one, just like that. Now just make sure though, like I said before, that they're matching on both sides. So I'm taking out the zero shim here, putting in the number one shim to match the other side, just like that. And you can see how the whole bolt just moved up. So in a one millimeter increment. And that's basically how the shim kit works. And then what's great about this is that once you've actually set it like that, it's never gonna come loose again. So you don't get the infinite adjustment of the eccentric hardware, but you also don't have it getting knocked loose all the time. So this is a very popular practice in not only the spec E30 racers, but also Miata spec uh, racers and other racing sanctions who have very similar camber and toe brackets. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Let us know how we can improve on this product or if there's anything that we'd like explain explained. And uh, thanks for watching.